Okay, so the first thing uh, we want to do, go ahead and get everything cleaned up. We've got everything cleaned up on the bench. Everything is ready to go. We're going to get our new seal kit out. We've got all our new clutches. Everything is there ready to go ahead and assemble that transmission. There's new clutch steels, new clutches. Now we're going to go ahead and do some updates to the uh, the pump. That's the first thing we're going to do. Um, then we're going to uh, check all the gear sets, check all the bushings, check any kind, every bushing that there is in the pump, in the tail shaft, in the drum. Check all the gears in the gear sets. Just go through everything very close, check the case out, make sure that everything is good and ready to go. Okay, the first update we're going to do is to the pump stator. Uh, you can see this hole right here, which is a um, fluid hole that uh, lubricates the bushing in the drum. What we want to do is take a 316 drill bit, open that hole up and drill it right across and right through to the other side. So there's a second hole on the other side and go ahead and chamfer both holes and then take some sandpaper and clean them up. That's the first thing we want to do. That's going to give more fluid to that bushing in the drum. Next thing we want to do is if you can see this very small feed hole right here. That hole is going to be opened up to 110 thou. That's going to uh, give more fluid to this bushing, this pump bushing here. And then the last thing we're going to do is in the pump, if you can see this hole right here, we're going to take a quarter inch drill bit and drill down, which intersects with this passage here and open it up to a quarter of an inch. So if you check your um, your drill index, um, a 764 drill bit is 110 thou. So we're going to go ahead and it's about 3 eighths of an inch in that we want to drill that. You'll fail when you get through. So we've gone ahead and opened that up to 110 thou. Okay, we're going to drill this hole out now to a quarter of an inch. Um, a normal drill bit won't work. Reason being the stator is so tall, you're going to have to get an extra long drill bit. It's a quarter of an inch. I went and purchased one that's over six inches long so that we can go down and drill that that hole. Now this is a converter fill hole, so that's going to allow the fluid to get back to the converter faster. Now you'll see when it intersects with this, this hole here, when you get down deep enough. Just want to drill and check, drill and check. And you'll see the other hole once you get down deep enough. What you can also do is take a drill bit down and you should see it come through when you're deep enough.
almost there. There, and you can see the drill bit come through now. I know it's going to be hard to see, but when, when you do it, you'll, you'll see what I mean. Okay, this is a, a series of input shafts for the uh, Power Glide. This one here is a stock Power Glide input shaft. The spline is much different than the Turbo 400. As you can see, it's a very coarse spline. Very, very coarse. Now these other units, these are Turbo 400 input shafts for the Power Glide. This is a steel input shaft. This is a 4340 input shaft, much stronger. Uh, harder steel, a 4340. Good up to about, I would say, 800 horsepower. Then we have a 300 amp input shaft. This is heat treated. This is good up to 1,000 horsepower. So that's the differences. Also, you see this machine part here. On turbohydromatic transmissions, they have a bushing here in the stator that supports the input shaft. Now, if you have a torque converter with the bushing in the torque converter, then you don't require a bushing in the stator. As you can see in this power glide stator, We've installed a, a bushing here to support the input shaft because the torque converter that he's using doesn't have a support bushing in the torque converter. So your torque converter manufacturer can do that for you. You just have to let him know which way you would like to go. So that's an important uh, fact that when you're getting a torque converter for your, for your vehicle, that's an important aspect that you're uh, manufacturer needs to know. So that's just a difference. Uh, you can see the fine splines versus the coarse splines of the power glide. Okay, I want to show you the differences between a rear pump model case and a front pump pump model case. As you can see here, this is a rear pump model. You can see these two ports, one here and one here, that have been blocked off for a trans brake application. Normally these ports would be open and this would be the reverse supply up at the top here. Now I want to show you the difference. This is a front pump model. As you can see it has the uh, same ports but this one is blocked, it isn't opened up. Where this one here, if you look on the inside of the case, the rear pump model you'll see the hole that comes into the inside. Now here is the rear piston apply. Now depending on your trans brake application, whether you purchase one or you build one, um, in this application here, um, it was to drill this hole out right through to the inside of the case where the piston is to a quarter of an inch. Um, and that's the only uh, drilling that was uh, applicable for this trans brake. Um, some other trans brakes, they do want you to drill up the port that intersects up here down at the bottom of the case. In this application for the TCI they just wanted the one hole drilled to the inside of the case. Uh, again, go with the manufacturer and their directions. Now this is the rear support. Uh, as you can see on the rear pump model there was actually a spot where the gears rode in there here. Just as the front pump model has but this had a rear pump. This was uh, six, pre-66 and then there was also a plate that goes with that. Now versus the front pump model as you can see they've changed. There is no housing with the gears anymore and it just has a bushing and there's a uh, this is a go where your governor uh, would go in on the stock transmission. So those are the differences. 
I know it may be hard to see, but it, right here is the hole that we drilled from the back side. You can see it to the to the right hand side here. Now in some applications they want you to drill down from this side half an inch with a 3 8 inch drill bit. And also on some applications they want you to drill with a 3 8 drill bit to intersect to those the hole we've already drilled for right through. This port here will intersect with that for the uh, for the fluid. So depending again on the application and whose trans brake you're using, go with their instructions. Okay, the next thing we want to do for trans brake is the rear piston. I don't know if you can see it here, but I've drilled a 16th inch hole right through the piston to the back side. And you got to be careful, you don't want to get it in this ring lens, because if you do it's ruined. So you want to be in the back side. And what that does, you put it at the 12 o'clock position in the case, and it'll help uh, bleed off the air trapped in there. Okay, what we've done here is we um, haven't put any seals in the rear piston. We've put, set the piston in, we've added the uh, steels and clutches, so a steel, a clutch, a steel, a clutch. Um, I was able to get six clutches in here, plus the reaction plate. So what we want to do is install the snap ring in there. Then we can go from the bottom. As you can see right here, we can measure in here with a feeler gauge to get our clearance. Anywhere from 90 to 120 thou is acceptable. If it's over 120 thou, then you're going to have to add another steel. And then you're going to have to subtract the amount of the thickness of that steel and get your piston machined. So say if you're 130 thou and you add um, you add another steel, that's another 70 thou. So then you have to do the math to figure out how much to get that piston machined to. And you take it to a machine shop and they will mill it for you. As you can see the different thicknesses of the pistons. This is probably a six cylinder application and if you check it it measures 180 thou. The one I've had machine measures 760 thou. So 760 thou versus a 180 thou. So over an inch. That's the difference. Uh, I was only able to get four clutches in that case before. Now by machining that piston, I was able to get six. Okay, this is another update that we're going to do. This is the uh, servo for the uh, band. As you can see, it's got one ring. That's a problem with the stock, uh, stock servo. Uh, it doesn't seal properly. It can leak past and, uh, and give us problems. It'll actually apply the clutch pack in the drum. So what we want to do is just take that clip off. We're going to remove this servo. We're going to add the new servo in here. As you can see, there's a small spring in here. Just go ahead and put that back over. A couple of washers on each side. And we can go ahead and apply our clip. And that's it and this is going to be much better for for the race transmission okay also as an update um, these are the gears that came out of the pump as you can see they've been in there for a long time uh, there's nothing wrong with them there's they're in good shape they could be reused again uh, but we're going to go ahead and install a new set I've ordered a brand new set for it what you want to do is just check your measurement Measure the width of the gears here, and we're looking at uh, 660,000. And we're within a thou here of the new gears, so that's good. Um, now what you should do is uh, once you get them in here, you can check the clearance um, with a straight edge across here and a feeler gauge. 
So check your clearance. You want to get a straight edge in on your uh, here and get a feeler gauge here. Between 5 and 15 thou is acceptable. Okay, another update we're going to do, as you can see, the differences here. This is a rear piston spring retainer. If you can see the stock one, very thin. They're very weak. Uh, we purchased a aftermarket one that is much stronger. As you can see, it's much thicker. And then also, we're, we've purchased new springs, which are much stiffer for the trans brake. I would suggest you, you do this to uh, every trans brake application that you build. Uh, these sock ones are very, very weak and they'll bend. Okay, another modification to the case you want to do if you're building a racing transmission. Uh, because you might have to put a uh, flywheel shield on, what we do is anything outside of this line, we trim off. Same as a big lug at the top of the case, which we are also going to trim off. Right here, there's a large lug that sticks up. That's going to have to be trimmed. And also anything outside the right side, same as the left. You want to trim all that off because you're going to have to run a, uh, some type of shield uh, for racing. Okay, we're going to do the same thing with the uh, drum as we did with the uh, reverse. We're going to put the piston in. I'm using all new clutches and steels. They're all brand new. I haven't soaked them yet because I want to do the clearance first. So we start with the steel, clutch and steel all the way up. I've got six steels and six clutches here. Okay, now to check the clearance, what you want to do is right here where the, where the ridge is, where the reaction plate sits on. What you want to do is uh, just get your uh, veneer calipers and measure down to that ridge that the reaction plate sits on. That's this reaction plate here. That would go on last. <clears throat> Usually there's a steel that goes on here and then the reaction plate but you can use the reaction plate as a steel as long as you sand it up, which I've done. I've got it all cleaned up and sanded it to use as a, as a steel. And we want around 100 thou. Right there, I've got a hundred thou. That's perfect. Now, if you didn't, if you don't have the proper clearance, you're either going to have to try to add another steel to the bottom to take up play, or if you're too tight, then you might have to machine that piston a little bit to get the proper clearance. But this is a stock piston I've used. I haven't machined this piston. But it's a V8 application piston, not a V6, so it's a little thinner. And then we'll have exactly 100 thou play when we put a reaction plate in and our snap ring. Now, accept, acceptable clearance for the uh, clutch pack, anywhere from 60 to 100 thou is fine. Uh, as long as you're in that range, you're good. Uh, you don't want to get outside of those tolerances. If you go below 60, it's too tight, the clutches may drag. Um, so you don't want to put them too tight, that's for sure. And then anything over 100, well then that's just uh, too much time for the clutch pack to, uh, to apply. So you want to be at between 60 and 100 thou. Now if you don't have any veneer calipers, what you can do is uh, measure, if you have a mic or something, measure a washer. These washers here are 50 thou. And I just set them in there. And if you look where the ridge is, you've got some play there, and these are 50. And you can take your reaction plate. As long as you put it in, you can get your snap ring in, then it's good. Um, so that's an alternate method. 
as I say, these are 50 thou, and if you push down, you can see there's probably another 10 thou there. So I'm saying I've got probably anywhere from 60 to 70 thou there, and that's within tolerance. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put our servo in. Um, so you, want, you have the large spring that you took out. I just got this case supported here on its side so you can see it better. Um, you might want to get some little uh, dentist tools. They come in handy for assembling. Now this is a dual ring servo, so it's going to be a little bit more trickier because you're going to have to get the two rings started. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and get it started in there. And just go around with my pick and push the rings in. And that's that. And now we can go ahead and install our cover, put our new seal in on the cover and our new gasket. Okay, you want to get your kit out. Hopefully you've purchased a kit that comes with uh, just about everything. We have our pump seal, extension housing seal, comes with Teflon ceiling rings instead of steel ceiling rings. Retainer and get our tool in there. Install the springs and retainer. Um, you're going to want to put a little bit of grease on these springs to hold them on the pockets. That's coming up next. Okay, so I've got the um, new updated springs, the new spring retainer in there. I've got the tool. I've compressed the uh, retainer with the springs. So I'm just going to put the snap ring on. You want to make sure that that snap ring is fully seated before you release this tool. And there we go, we got our new heavy duty springs, a new spring retainer mounted in there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install the uh, rear clutch pack. Uh, the steels, they'll only go in one way. And they go in exactly like I'm holding it. If you see this little tang here, it has to be on the right hand side. And this, this goes in about the 7 o'clock position. So if you just slide it down in there, and that little notch has to be the right hand side. That's the only way they'll go in. So I've soaked my clutches for over half an hour. Line up your tanks properly. Start with a steel, then a clutch, then a steel, then a clutch. Now remember we've already checked the clearances here. We know what our clearance is. We're good to go. Okay, so the pressure plate will only go in one way. There is no tang to uh, to line it up. You just basically have to find out the combination and go ahead and put that in. Then we can go ahead and put our snap ring in.
And that's a clutch pack. Okay, so next we're going to get our um, ring gear lined up with the clutches from the gear set. I suggest standing it up when you do this. It's very hard to do when the transmission is laying down. Just want to turn that gear around, ring gear around until you can get them all lined up. There you go. That's down. Okay, next we want to get our bearing. Goes on the back of the gear set. Slide it right down the shaft all the way down. Put some assembly lube on it. Stick it on there. And we can go ahead and slide our gear set in there. Now I have a hole in this transmission table. Just get everything lined up. Okay, next we want to uh, make sure that this washer down in here doesn't move around. There's a brass, wash, brass washer down in the gear set. So we want to make sure that that's not going to move. So we'll go ahead and take some assembly lube, just put it on your finger, and go ahead and just push that lube in and around that washer. That's just going to hold it in place so it's centered in the gear set. Then we'll take our Torrington bearing, which if you remember in the disassembly, if you watch the disassembly, we had a problem getting the drum apart from here. This was a problem. So we've got a new Torrington bearing, got some lube on it, and it's bearing side down because the reaction plate is going to sit right on that bearing. Okay, next we want to get our two seals for the drum. They're both lip seals. This seal goes in the drum itself. You want to make sure you get it in there the right way because it's a large groove. It, can, it is possible for it to get Moved around upside down. Then get your piston. Get the outer lip seal put on that. get a bunch of lube on both seals. <clears throat> okay, so we want to get our 10 thou feeler gauge. You get that piston put in there. Okay, so I've gone ahead, put the springs in. Now we're going to be leaving some springs out. So install two, leave one out. So every third spring, leave out. That's going to speed up the, the high gear apply. Uh, so we've got our tool here. Get our spring retainer. Look for our snap ring. Get it on there. We want to compress the springs. Go ahead and get our snap ring put on. Make sure it's fully seated. Remove our tool. Now we're going to get our steel. Soaked. 
So steel, clutch, steel, clutch. already checked our clearances here. <coughs> so we can just go ahead and install our clutches. Now we have a thrust washer that goes here. A small one. Put some assembly lube on it. Go ahead and put some lube around that bushing. We've got our clutch hub. And we have our thrust washer that goes in between there. Sits on the top. So go ahead and get your clutch hub in there. And then uh, get our thrust washer. Put some assembly lube on it. Stick it on the reaction plate and go ahead and put our reaction plate on. And get our snap ring, get it put on. And we want to get our wedding band, put some assembly lube on the wedding band, and we're going to slide it down in the reaction plate here. Tap it around and it'll slide down in there. And it's just going to sit there <coughs> until uh, eventually, when we put the input shaft in, the input shaft will line up with the drum when we put the input shaft through this way. Okay, we want to go ahead and get our two rings installed on the input shaft. Go ahead, we're going to put some lube on there. And we can go ahead, get our input shaft, slide it into the drum. Okay, and get your wedding band lined up on the input shaft. And we can go ahead, gently drop our drum in here. And we take our input shaft. Then once you've got that lined up, pull your input shaft out. We want to look down in there and make sure that our washer is still lined up. And our Torrington bearing is still lined up also. You just want to have a look down in there. Make sure everything's lined up properly. Okay, next I just wanted to show you the Kevlar band. This is a racing band. It's Mark Kevlar, right on it, heavy duty, made in the USA, just so you know. It's not a stock band, so we're going to soak that in the oil for 30 minutes, and then install the band and the struts. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install our band. We've got it all soaked in the oil for 30, 30 minutes. We'll just take our small strut, get it put in the band, and then the uh, servo pin. And we can take, go ahead and take our large strut, the larger of the two, goes on the adjustment side. Okay, 
to be tightened it in here, so just gonna maneuver a little bit. Just like so, then we can take our Allen key, put it on the adjustment rod. We don't want to tighten it up right now, we want to leave it loose. We just want to put a little bit of tension on it so the pin is just sturdy in the strut, like so. We, wanna, we want it to uh, stay loose until we get that pump put in. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put our uh, pump together. We've got our new O-ring out of our kit. We'll go ahead and put that on, pump body. Uh, we've got our brand new gears. We've measured them. They're within a half a thou of the old gears. And again, if you're not sure, we're going to put some oil on these gears. If you're not sure, get a straight edge across here and measure it. I know. I'm planning on distracting this guy. <laughs> 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 With our new gears. Okay, so if you are measuring uh, with a straight edge, three and a half to six and a half thou um, is the tolerance for the pump gears. So we've got our stator. This stator has the bushing in it for the input shaft. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and line our two halves up. Now we've got our five pump bolts. These are the bolts with the five lines on them. Okay, we want to get our thrust washer. <clears throat> I've got a couple with different thicknesses here. This one is 91 thou. Second one is, <clears throat> excuse me, 78 thou. I'm going to go ahead and put the 91 thou in. We're going to start with that. Put some uh, assembly lube on it. We're going to get our, our two rings, <clears throat> get them put on. And we want to put lots of lube on the uh, on the rings because these are a non-locking ring. Then go ahead and put a lot on the uh, thrust washer also. Okay, we'll get our uh, large gear clamp. I bought two six-inch gear clamps and put them together. This lines the two half pump halves up, so when it goes into case, it'll be uh, won't hang up. Support itself, and a good reference point is this. Sort of looks like a little couple mountains here. It'll only go one way. You can see if you put it the other way, um, it doesn't line up properly. So again, just make sure you get it the proper way. Get the ports matched up. And there's nothing else to go inside here, that's it. We're just going to go ahead and slide that gasket and cover on. You want to take a couple of bolts. And 
and just tap it in and then snug your bolts up. Okay, don't forget to put your um, little shield on the bottom bolt here. Make sure you get that deflection shield on. You want to get your extension housing O-ring. Go ahead and stick that on. At that point, we can go ahead and put our extension housing on. Uh, the stock power glide, naturally, there'd be a governor back here um, and a support for the governor. But uh, for the racing tranny, we don't use any of that. If you'd like to see what is on there, um, you can go on the uh, on my websites, and the disassembly shows the stock power glide disassembly. And then we have our five extension housing bolts. Get them put on and tighten them up. Okay, I've gone ahead and pulled the um, speedo pinion out. I put a new O-ring in the uh, pinion here. Comes in the kit, so you might as well change it. Get put in there, then you have your little bolt and lock tab. This fits in the in the slot in the uh, pinion and just go ahead and snug up your bolt. Okay, we're going to go ahead and adjust the band, so we want to go ahead and wind that all the way in. I believe the proper <coughs> tension on this is 76 inch pounds. I just, I just watch it. When I see there's no more travel, and I stop there, and they, the, they want you to turn it out three and a half to four turns. One, two. Three and a half. And they say with a new band you should adjust it after about uh, 12 passes and consecutively after that. They say check adjustment periodically and then tighten down your lock nut. Okay, this is the uh, trans brake valve body. Um, there is some machining. Uh, depending on whose trans brake it is, they are all different. This is a TCI valve body here. As you can see, this passage has been milled out. Right here has also been milled out. This passage here has been milled. And also right here has been milled. And then they've plugged this circuit here. The pressure regulator valve is stock nothing has been done to that all the work is done to this valve here and they basically take the springs out and then they plug it up solid uh, there's nothing moving in there actually um, and then we also have the other part of the valve body there's a small piece that's been machined here and that's this passage right here so that's just some of the machining that's done also, it's a special separator plate. This is a separator plate here from TCI. Now, the, uh, the separator plate is the same separator plate you would use with the manual valve body. It's exactly the same. Um, so that's about all I can tell you about the valve body. There are kits available that you can build your own trans brakes with. If anybody's interested in uh, purchasing them, you can contact me on my websites or in my email and uh, I can get you uh, the information for that. And then also we have our trans brake solenoid that goes in where the modulator goes in and pushes on a valve in the uh, valve body here to lock it in first and reverse at the same time. Okay, so go ahead and get your two gaskets. Uh, make sure you get the proper ones. 
Your kid will probably have both for a front pump and a rear pump. Um, so just be careful. Uh, they are different. Uh, get some assembly lube or grease. Get the gasket stuck to the separator plate. And just get it lined up. Try to get everything kind of lined up. Get one bolt started. Just work your way around and get them all started in there. And just do all the interior bolts. We want to leave uh, this one and this one because we've got our plate to put on in here plus our uh, spring. Go through that in a moment. So we got these three, these four, which go in the case. And then we have our two for here and here. Let's get them all snugged up. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put our valve body on. Um, so you want to get your two. It goes into the servo for the band. Get your uh, your bolts all ready. You have your spring for your, your shift linkage. So we're just going to go ahead and get your manual valve in here. Manual shift lever valve. I'm going to try to get everything lined up here and then set it on. You want to make sure you get that manual valve in there. And then just adjust your two. Get it started in there. And just give it a tap to get it down. Get your bolts all started. Just make sure you've got everything lined up. It's supposed to be there. We have our short one in the middle at the top. Our two long ones here. And then the four long at the bottom. Sorry, we gotta we gotta put our alignment plate on for a shift linkage for this one here, and then a short one right here. Go ahead and get them all snugged up.
get them torqued to 20 foot pounds. Okay, so we have to get our spring put on for our detent. So you just hook it on your, your lever, get some needle nose, just hooked on to that eyelet. Now we can go ahead and get our pan gasket and put our pan on. Um, we're going to have to get our filter adapter. Okay, so then you just want to go ahead and check all your linkage, make sure it's all working. We're getting full travel through the whole rooster comb. Um, next we can go ahead and put our filter on. So because of the deep pan we have an adapter here. Takes up the space of the, uh, of the deep pan. We've got a brand new filter. Came with the kit. Okay, so just go ahead and get your, your filter and spacer in both gaskets. You have long bolts that came with the uh, adapter kit. If you get the pan, it comes in the kit. Snug those, pan, uh, those filter bolts up, sorry. And then we can go ahead and get our, our gasket. Get our pan. With the pan came, uh, new bolts came with the pan. It's part of the kit. They're an Allen head bolt. Let's go ahead and get a couple started. Go ahead and get our bolts all installed. Okay, so we've gone ahead and got all the bolts installed for the pan, tightened them all up. Um, I've left you out here, you might notice that's for the uh, shifter lever. For the uh, shift top. Okay, another thing that we have to uh, get put on. We want to get our spool valve put in. Just make sure that it works nice and free in there. Just put a little bit of oil on the spool valve before you do put it in. Um, then we can go ahead and get our trans solenoid install it. There's a small little gasket that goes here. I just stuck it on with some RTV. Go ahead and screw in the solenoid. Now, there's two different types of solenoids. One might only have a one wire, that means that it's grounding through the case. If so, I kind of like the two wire ones, then you know you've got a good ground, especially when you're dealing with aluminum. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed the safety shield so you can see what that looks like. Uh, just, in, just in case uh, there's an explosion, uh, this stops everything from flying all around. Uh, two bolts uh, screw into the servo. You have some brackets that go into the extension housing on each side. One there. Um, they do take some fitting. These brackets are not perfect. When you do get them, you might have to bend them a little bit. And then there's one bracket up in the front. Attaches to the front of the bell housing down here at the bottom. Okay, so that's the uh, complete uh, assembly of the uh, Power Glide transmission. If you have any questions, email me at my website. I also have a chat message board there, the chat line on the websites also. Um, other than that, uh, hope you guys uh, learned a little bit, and we hope to see you soon. Take care.